so I am just putting together a quick and dirty tutorial of what I am doing in Doe to create animations like this. If you're running into troubles with the install, I highly suggest you go to the Bandoko Discord, which I will link below. They are wonderful people and they will definitely help you uh, with any sort of issues that you have. So let's go ahead and go over to the GitHub page. Um, just forget about all this stuff. It's very complicated. Don't let it um, confuse you. <laughs> just scroll down. If you were just gonna go ahead and install it on your Windows computer, then you're going to open up PowerShell and you're just going to copy this, go to your PowerShell and paste it, paste anyway, and hit enter. Once you've installed it, um, you'll come back to PowerShell and you'll be here, right? And so this is something that they don't write in the GitHub. The only thing that they tell you is to then go ahead and run the app. The problem is, is if you try to do that, um, this folder that it's trying to run isn't in um, your basic spot in your PowerShell. <laughs> the folder, I don't know. Just don't pay attention to the words I'm using. Just uh, follow what I'm gonna do. Basically, you have to direct it to the right folder in order to run the next step. So just put in CD dough. And this is what you're gonna do every time that you run it from now on. Um, so put in CD dough, that's gonna point you to the dough folder. And then you can copy this and put it in here and hit run. So now here is the Doe interface. It's opened up, it's happy, we got there, congratulations. Um, the interface is still a little clunky, so you know it takes a little bit of time to get used to, and obviously there are constantly going to be updates coming in, so this probably won't even be helpful in a week, but um, basically the way that you're gonna think about this workflow is you're going to have shots, and so you, it gives you a shot to start out with, um, but you can start a new shot and let's just call it Puppet. Okay, great, now I have a shot. Now I can adjust Puppet or I can animate Puppet. I don't wanna animate Puppet right now because there's nothing in it. So you wanna go to Adjust Puppet. So now we're at the spot of, okay, well, what do I wanna put in there, Amelie? Like, what do I wanna put in there? I don't know. And of course the answer to that is, I don't know, guys, do whatever you want, just go play with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, as with all AI, definitely go in with just playing and seeing what can happen. That's what I did myself. Um, you can generate frames within here if you want to, um, but I just decided that I wanted to use Mid Journey because I thought in my head, you know, if I want to do a character that's just sort of slightly moving around, like the video that I showed you, Mid Journey might be a great place to do it. I had this little picture of a marionette and I was like, great, let's vary it strong. Let's vary it subtle. Let me see what I got. When you do very strong, it's gonna keep it very similar, but you know, you might get some different poses like here, you know, the little puppets facing the other way. Their head is different. Their face is surprised, um, that sort of thing. Now, obviously you can dial this in even more if you use character reference or style reference, but with this, I wasn't particularly 100% interested in making sure that like the clothes were exactly the same and it was gonna be like uh, amazingly cohesive. I just wanted to play with the tool and figure out how to use it. It's not about being perfect the first time and sometimes you come across happy accidents and that's what's fun about it. So basically I just kept iterating on that, kept getting little slight changes, uh, zooming in, zooming out, different facial expressions, different positions. And then I took all the pictures that I liked and I just dumped them into dough. So now it's just about ordering. And again, it's still a little bit clunky. I would love if you could kind of like just click on this and tell it to jump to the first position, but you have to use these back and forth arrows. So you want to kind of have things that have the changes go subtly. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up and then we can see what I'm talking about. So now I have it all set up and as you can see, it sort of has this nice little flowy flow to it. So we're all on the same side. She's kind of just maybe like looking around, being amazed by what's happening in her life. I don't know. Um, then she gets pulled back. Then she is a little marionette and she's dancing and then she's a ballerina. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, 
So yeah, after you have your keyframes set up like so, you are just going to go over here and you're going to go to animate shot because now you're ready. So go to animate shot and now there's, oh no, all of these crazy things <laughs> and it's confusing. I will go into a more in-depth dive on all of this later, but again, I just wanted to showcase what you can do with these tools by just going in and playing and not trying to be perfect about it. Now, the only thing that I changed was the freedom to frames and I pushed them all up. And that was just because something that Tom told me, I've tried it also with it lower and I haven't noticed a huge difference other than it does become a little bit more cohesive, but I could also be making that up. After I did that, you're gonna come down here and you're going to use either the models that are here or you can download your own models. I went ahead and just used Deliberate. I find it works really well for these more kind of like artistic cartoony kind of looks. Okay, so now here is something that's kind of fun. So you have this motion guidance. So you can download these Lauras. They have a bunch of them, but you can also find more on the Bendoko Discord. So I highly suggest going over there. People are constantly training them right now and coming up with some like weird, cool, crazy stuff. The thing to think about with motion Lauras is really just play. Like, you know, there's obviously some things that might seem more obvious like if you're doing something of a guy running like yeah use the man running motion Laura that'll probably help right um for the one that I did above I did a rotating drone and then I also you can have multiples because you know let's just do it I also think I did the ballerina because it turns into a ballerina at the end I was like hey why not I also ended up on a different run, which you can see here. I used motion ants, which is a motion lore that was trained on like ant movement. And no, there were no ants and there was like no little people or no little things moving around, but it kind of added like this wind effect. So again, go play, you know, that's what you want to do. So after you add your Lauras, and again, I'm not messing with anything else. I'm just keeping everything as is. You just hit Q. You can keep an eye on your log over here. This is a generation log. And then you're going to get your pretty little animation. So this is just a tip of the iceberg tutorial. You can do so much more with this tool by controlling how these frames move between each other. But I just wanted to encourage people to start playing. So I hope that you all go in make some amazing creations, get 100% better than I am at it, and then come back and tell me how to do it because I'm still learning, you're still learning, and that's why we're all here. So until next time, I'll see ya. Bye.